Chapter 10.1, Journalizing Sales on Account, and we're proving and ruling a sales journal. So as we've gone throughout uh, this second uh, half of the a course, we've started dealing with a merchandising business, and we've also started dealing with special journals. In Chapter 9, we dealt with the Purchases Journal, we dealt with the Cash Payments Journal. In chapter 10, we're going to do with our other two new special journals, and that's going to be a, uh, a sales journal and a cash receipts journal. So when we have a, the difference in Chapter 9 versus Chapter 10 is Chapter 10, we are going to be selling stuff, uh, and we're going to be receiving cash for items, whereas in Chapter 9, we were buying stuff and we were paying cash for stuff. So since that, we're going to have a couple different source documents. When we sell stuff, we're going to have a sales invoice. So anytime you see a sales invoice, you should know that that should be a um, sales journal entry there. As we talk about the sales journal, just kind of explain it. As you can see, it's got three special amount columns. Uh, the first special amount column it has is an accounts receivable debit, which means that we're going to be selling stuff on account. Uh, the sales credit, which means we're obviously going to be selling stuff, stuff. And then there's the sales tax payable. We only use sales journals when we sell when we sell stuff on account. If we if we receive cash for sales, that's a whole different. That's going to go on our cash receipts journal. Since since we sold merchandise or sold stuff or performed services on account, that is going to be our sales journal. All others will go in the cash receipts. So some things to note too, just some new accounts that we haven't seen yet. Sales tax payable. Sales tax payable is a liability. It sits on the right hand side of the equation. Since it sits on the right hand side of the accounting equation, it is increased with a credit. Accounts receivable, which we've seen before, remember that is that asset account, um, and that sits on the left-hand side of the equation, and since it sits on the left-hand side of the equation, debit means an increase. Go back to sales tax payable. The reason sales tax payable is a liability is because we have not paid Uncle Sam yet. We've collected the amount of money to pay Uncle Sam, but we have not paid uh, the government their fair share of taxes. Until we pay the government their taxes, that is a liability to our business. So let's take a look at a, at a couple transactions here. First one we'll take a look at is sold merchandise on account to Ketchum Clothing for $457.50 plus tax at $27.45 for a total of $485.95 with the sales invoice of 134. So my three accounts that I'm going to use, I'm going to use accounts receivable, catch them clothing, because I sold merchandise on account. I'm going to use sales because it says sold, and that's my indicator. And then I'm going to use sales tax payable. Um, so basically, remember, and as we go through it, my debit to accounts receivable, which is that asset account, which will be 484.95. That debit represents the total for all of the sales. Now, on the credit side, we're going to break that down into two. We're going to break it down into the actual amount of the sale, which is 457. Credit, okay, sales is that owner's equity account that's going to increase her owner's equity. And then sales tax payable, that's going to be the small amount that we owe uh, Uncle Sam. In this case, it's twenty-seven forty-five. So then we just take it from the T accounts to the sales journal, and we're going to date it, which is September 2nd, as given us the transaction. Our account debited is going to be accounts receivable catch'em clothing. Now, we don't need to put accounts receivable catch'em clothing because of our special amount column that says accounts receivable debit. So we just have to put the company name there. My sales invoice number is S134. I put my accounts receivable debit of 484.95. My sales credit will be 457.50. And my sales tax payable, which will be 27.45. So let's take a look at the next transaction. Sold merchandise on account to Jackson City Schools, 426. Jackson City Schools is exempt from paying sales tax. Sales invoice, 136. So my three accounts that I'm going to use is accounts receivable, Jackson City Schools, sales, and sales tax payable. Now, the amount that Jackson City Schools owes us is actually 426. The amount of the sale is actually 426 and there is no sales tax payable here because they are tax exempt. Tax exempt means you do not have to pay taxes. Um, Nonprofits and uh, schools, for example, are going to be good examples of sales ta people who are tax exempt. So if we go over to the sales journal, it's going to look like this, September 10. We're going to account debited. Once again, I don't have to write out accounts receivable debit uh, for my sales journal. I can just write Jackson City Schools because the under column one in the accounts receivable debit, that special amount column tells me what it's going to be. My sales invoice number is 130, S136. 
my accounts receivable debit is 426 and my sales credit is 426. In this case, I would leave sales tax payable blank, but I'm putting a zero for to make the example there. But we don't put anything in there because they are tax exempt. We don't have to we don't have to pay taxes to the government on the merchandise that we sold to them because they are tax exempt. So real quick, just kind of take a look at what a completed sales journal is going to look like. It's a couple things you're going to notice here. Number one is you're going to notice that the column one and column two, the accounts receivable debit and the sales credit column, will always be filled in on a sales journal. Uh, that's the point of it. Number sales journal represents when we sell merchandise or sell items on account. So those two first two columns will always be filled in. Uh, when they're tax exempt, like Fairview Church, that's going to the they'll, they'll equal, and the sales tax tax payable credit columns will be empty. And then finally, the other thing that you'll want to take a look at too is notice that in the accounts debited column, they're not writing accounts receivable village crafts. They're actually writing just the company name because of that special amount column. Then when you're done with that, what you'll do is what you've done before is you'll total and rule. You'll draw a single line. You'll add up the column. You'll make sure that your debit, in this case, which is, which is your accounts receivable debit column, will equal the combination, the addition of your sales tax credit plus your sales tax payable credit. In this case, they do. And then that way you've known that you've proved and ruled your journal. Hope this helps, and don't forget to do the lesson on Amplia.